Richard, maybe you'd uh, like to respond in terms of, uh, say, where organisations like uh, ASPO, um, maybe where, where you, you see the challenges, or indeed, as Kieran suggests, where maybe you're falling down in terms of actually influencing this policy discussion. Not to put you on the spot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's... Uh, it's the first time I, I, I've, I've, uh, or it's been said that that's what isn't good at lobbying, but I suppose it, that would have to be true. I mean, we're largely a group of, of uh, scientists and, and engineering people. Uh, we're not politicians. We're not lobbyists. And ASPO doesn't have a budget. I mean, the, uh, as Kieran knows, I've lobbied him. I've been into him. Uh, I've been into uh, Deputy Coveney, who's the Fine Gael, uh, spokesperson on energy. I've been with Liz McManus. Um, and uh, all, granted, all recently, uh, uh, in the last 12 months, uh, in the case of Simon Coveney, uh, only in the last few weeks. And uh, what's interesting, obviously, is the fact that they're well aware. Um, I've spoken with the chief scientific advisor to the government. Uh, he's actually briefed cabinet on peak oil, uh, which is his remit. Um, he's, only had, he's only done it once. Um, he went down and he visited with Dr. Colin Campbell. <coughs> Uh, just to make sure that it was a credible story and sufficiently convinced uh, he, he gave his briefing. So um, I, no doubt that, uh, I mean, even the uh, private member's bill that Deputy Coveney brought in front of the door last month uh, is very, and the, the debate that happened, uh, which was quite well informed, I mean, if anything, it uh, demonstrates a level of sophistication and understanding in our government um, about this issue. Um, <coughs> But it equally demonstrates, and I think uh, I certainly heard it in, in, in Minister Cuff's discussion about what the government is trying to do, that the rate uh, at which, I suppose in terms of how, how politics operates and the speed at which it operates, means that it's not well equipped to deal with a problem like this. Uh, and I think that within the ASPO community, and it, we've seen it in the UK, where um, they put an industry task force together where with the sort of small lobbying resources that we do have, we're investing them in industry, where we see that they have resources and capability to do things and respond in a way that government really isn't equipped to do. Governments tend to follow rather than to lead and deal with the day-to-day -day crisis rather than have the opportunity to think 15, 20 years in, in, ahead. And again, Thinking, thinking 15, 20 years ahead is no longer part of the solution, you know. Um, and, and, and really, it's, I think, if I were in a position to lobby government to try and do something about this problem, it would be on the disaster risk management side. Uh, and that can be done in a low-key way with relatively little resources, so that at least there are a group of people at various points in, the, in society that if this disaster should occur, like anything, like the uh, swine flu pandemic that... Uh, we thought might hit the country um, last uh, winter. A lot of work was done by the state in preparation for such a disaster. Um, there's no reason why the government couldn't do exactly the same thing for some of the scenarios that David describes in his report. And I think uh, it's in that single regard, because the stuff that, that the government are doing is long-term and it's necessary, but it doesn't address the risk management problem that we have in the near term. 